Hello Horror Hounds, we're back with another World Cup. All the entries are sat waiting, let me just tip you forwards. Twelve of them, it's a Dario Argento World Cup. We've got twelve entries, which means the final is going to be a three-way. And this is going to be a really tough one for me because I love Argento and his quality varies wildly. Um, and should we just crack on and, and see how we get on? Uh, groups A, B and C, so first quarter final. In group A, these have all been pre shuffled. C's Terror at the Opera versus Oh, uh, Tenebre. <clears throat> this for me, uh, sorry, Opera fans, this is an easy win for Tenebre. This goes through, so I'll get a chance to talk about this fuller later. Terror at the Opera has got. It's got some amazing stuff in it. The uh, sewing needle eye things is an amazing visual. It's got the wonderful sweeping uh, camera, uh, the, the bird's eye view of the. Uh, is it a crow? I can't remember. It's, uh, flying around the opera house. Given how operatic Argento's movies are, setting one. Uh, in and behind the scenes of an operatic performance of Macbeth seems like an absolute uh, no-brainer. It is patchy though, Tenebre wins. Uh, second quarter final in Group A then, we'll see. Dracula versus an easy win for whatever this is. Oh, Two Evil Eyes, his, his segment, uh, The Black Cat in Two Evil Eyes. Um, easy win for Two Evil Eyes. Um, that goes through. Uh, I don't like to, to trash Dario Argento, uh, but Dracula is awful. Um, there's, I can only remember a couple of things from it. It's, it's the nudity, one of which is from his daughter, again. What's up with that? I think it might just be an Italian thing. <laughs> I think it just might be a more relaxed attitude to nudity, but still. Uh, oh, and Dracula turning into a praying mantis, I remember. The rest of it, I mean, it's got Rutger Hauer in it, and I cannot remember a single thing about Rutger Hauer's performance. It's, it, it's boring, it's dull, it does not go through. <coughs> Group B, first quarter final. Pits. The Stendhal Syndrome controversial movie against... Profondo Rosso, Deep Red. Wow, now this is, okay, those were, those were fairly easy matches for, for the two winners. This is, this is slightly more difficult. This would have been easier had I not re relatively recently re-watched Dental Syndrome. I didn't particularly like this movie. It left a bad taste in my mouth. I don't particularly like the subject matter. Um, and if we're talking a, 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 about Dario seeming to, to like getting Asia, his daughter, naked, but filming her being raped on multiple occasions as well, really tips this over into, well, beyond uncomfortable territory, into something just very, very icky. I rewatched it again recently. It's a lot smarter than I gave it credit for. It, it, it really is Argento bringing his own flavor to to a, a Hitchcock type story. It's a lot less straightforwardly misogynistic than I, than I thought it was. In fact, it's strangely feminist in, in, in some aspects. Yet, um, Profondo Rosso is, is just solid all the way through. I love it. We'll talk about it a little bit later on. Deep Red Wins. Uh, group B, second quarter final then, C's. Roma, the first uh, of his American productions. Argento comes to America versus Sleepless. Okay, this is a really interesting matchup because these two are. I think they're both. No, I think he went back to Italy for this, but they're they're both uh, sort of in during his second Giallo period. Giallo, I know he did the westerns before, but, but Giallo, and he moved more into the supernatural, and, and, and with these, he's coming back uh, to Giallo. With, with 
maybe not as much success as he had earlier on in his career. This is, these are sort of both sort of second tier, I think it's fair to say, Argento and Murder Mysteries. Um, so they're both, they're both patchy. It's going to have to go down to the one I've just got more of a fondness for, which ultimately everything in these videos boils down to. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but Sleepless, I believe, is the one with, uh, with the puppet that kind of runs towards Max von Sydow. I'm convinced, by the way, as, as an aside, Saw, the first Saw movie, which, is, which d does not have gratuitous violence in it, is more of an homage to the works of Dario Argento and Italian giallo cinema than it is the uh, progenitor of, uh, of torture porn. Uh, Billy the puppet in that, I think, is a nod towards um, uh, the puppet in Sleepless. And remember, you've got uh, Michael Emerson's character who, who uh, kidnaps uh, the doctor's wife and, and kid. Is he called Zeke? For a long part of the movie, he's the unseen figure with the, the, the black gloved yeah, killer, the bad guy. I mean, that's a giallo staple. I mean, it's got this has got Max von Sydow in it. I think this is the one with uh, uh, the killer using the, the nursery rhyme from the children's book and the cutout. Uh, animals i just it's fine i just don't like it as much as trauma i know trauma is patchy but i love i love trauma uh piper laurie is just out there as the holding the seance at the start and then uh, the killer is in the room the killer is here and and the weird mechanism that it, uh, the fishing wire getting retracted in to, to sever the heads and uh, Brad Dourif in in a little cameo and his head falls down the, the shaft and a talking head um, and uh, the reason why the murders are happening once that, that reveal happens is so horrific. Um, whilst, whilst it's not as polished as some of his earlier works, uh, it's, it's horrifically trashy and I do love trauma. Trauma wins. Group C. I'm going to try and keep this video as short as I can. We're already at seven and a half minutes. Inferno! Bonkers Inferno. We've had none of the three others trilogy yet. So Inferno goes up against Phenomena. Oh, no! Oh, man, I lied. They're both, they're both so out there. Um, it's, this, is, <laughs> this is quite another appropriate matchup. This is going to be difficult for me. Um, I've talked about Inferno previously. I've, I've not talked about uh, Phenomenon, which is just crazy. A really young Jennifer Connelly can speak to, has an affinity for insects, and she meets up with Donald Pleasance, uh, who has also a, a helper monkey, and she uses the insects to help her find the killer. There's a killer going around. Uh, I believe this was sliced and diced uh, for its uh, US release to completely remove the actual killer and, and make out that the, that the monkey was the killer. Just completely bizarre. I can't imagine what that version must, must uh, watch like. But the monkey's the freaking hero um, in this. Ah, it's got Donald Pleasance. It's got some amazing kills. The reveal of the killer is insane. Um, Inferno. Oh, Inferno is, is kind of like the madness of Suspiria, but just with, with, with all sense and logic thrown out of the window. There's no one through line. It, it, it jumps around. It's very messy, sort of much like real life. I, can't, I still can't decide whether it's a really awful script or it's actually much more realistic. There's no one real hero. People stumble around and... Uh, and, and it's all sorts of little vignettes and it looks amazing right up until the stupid skull mask at the end the underwater scene at the start is amazing oh my god I can't choose I'm going to put this one on pause I'm going to put that one on pause sorry guys we'll do the we'll do the final quarter final in group C Spirius still hasn't come up so it will be a shorter one, I imagine, because I can't see Suspiria not winning. Yeah, there we go. Suspiria versus, I feel sorry for whatever it's gone up against. Well, this is going to be an easy one. My, my, my mother of tears. At the hands of anyone else, this, this, this would be a, a, 
a sort of Halloween night pleasure because it's Argento and because it's the finale of the Three Mothers trilogy. I think people's expectations uh, were higher than than perhaps they might have been. This thing was being developed for an awfully long time. Development hell sort of springs to mind. It's the budget's not great for it, but there's some great stuff in it. There's an amazing, amazing tracking shot following Arja Argento through a house, through three levels, in, up the stairs, down, down into the basement, which is superb. It's lit beautifully. There's a whole ton of gore in this. Uh, it, it's one of his gorier efforts. Unfortunately, it's just, as a conclusion to the Three Mothers trilogy, the ending is wrapped up fairly perfunctorily. Um, there's not a big battle like there really should have been, like there really needed to be. Um, I do like it. I've got a lot of affection for it, but it ain't fucking Suspiria. Suspiria wins. So back to Phenomena and Inferno. Oh. The crazy hotel. Oh, the guy. Oh, this is difficult. This is so difficult. Um, we're already at 11 minutes. I'm going to have to choose one. What would I sit down and choose to watch? Inferno. Right. <coughs> <coughs> Group A semi-final. This is Tenebre versus Two Evil Eyes. Wow. Um, <sighs> Two Evil Eyes uh, is a really fun flick. Uh, two short films. I mean, it's, it's feature length. George Romero, uh, adaptations of Edgar Allan Poe stories. George Romero does uh, the facts in the case of Monsieur Valdemar, uh, and Dario Argento does The Black Cat. Uh, it stars Harvey Keitel, uh, even though it's set in modern day. It actually has sort of nightmare elements and elements of uh, witchcraft and witches, which, which gives it a sort of blood tie to the Mother's trilogy. Uh, even though it's updated for the modern age, or modern for when it was made, uh, I actually think it's one of the best Poe adaptations out there. Uh, probably the best to my mind, off the top of my head, uh, would be Mask of the Red Death, the Roger Corman Vincent Price film. Uh, I adore the stories of Edgar Allan Poe, and there are a lot of awful adaptations. This is not one of them. It's, it's strong, it's got lots of nods to other Poe uh, tales, which these days would be called Easter eggs, uh, so he's kind of ahead of the curve on that one. Uh, it's a it's a great little uh, short. It's a nice. It's a really nice double bill. This is a really nice title. Um, Tenebre, on the other hand, uh, let's think about that. This is Argento uh, really directly addressing uh, the accusation level that him that violent films cause violence. Uh, he's got he's got. A writer, an American writer, essentially of giallo fiction, coming to Italy to do a, a promotional thing, and there's sort of an obsessed fan that's using his books to, to kill people. Um, the twist in it is superb. Um, there's a set piece in a, in a house with two women in a house where the camera comes out uh, up up the side of the house, looks through the windows over the over the roof, down the other side, uh, with some, some excellent kills in there. The reveal at the end is, is superb. It's, it's almost worthy of Psycho. Uh, and when you watch it for the second time, there's a, there's a shot in it. Uh, it seems bizarrely out of place where he pulls across a room and focuses on, I think it's a desk ornament, and the light's hitting the desk ornament, and he just focuses on it and then pulls away again. And it's, you know, like, you're kind of used to crazy shots in Dario Argento movies, so you just kind of accept it. When you know what the twist is and when you watch it again, it's just the most sublime tip of the hat to go, okay, we've moved into a different gear now. You're watching a slightly different film. It's, it's, it's exquisite. Um, so Tenebre, Tenebre wins. Although check this out. Group B, Trauma versus Profondo Rosso. So as I said before, a sort of um, <clears throat> Indian summer of Shallow movies versus uh, one, of the, one of the originals. We've had a little chat about Trauma. Let's talk about Profondo Rosso. A genuinely chilling. It's, it's got all the key ingredients. It's got the uh, 
black gloved killer. It's got uh, a hero witnessing a murder and then uh, niggling away at uh, a, a misremembered thing. I witnessed something. I know I witnessed something and my memory is playing tricks on me and I have to work out what it is that I saw, which is the key to it. Um, you've also got David Hemmings uh, teaming up in this with Daria Nicolodi, uh, Argento's long-term partner. And this is back when they were happy. So her character is happy and bright and engaged. Uh, not like um, <laughs> later on he <laughs> Later on, her characters get darker as their relationship soured. Uh, in, in this, he's got a kind of uh, f fractious but energetic relationship with her that reminds me of, uh, of Howard Hawks movies and things like that, his Girl Friday uh, type stuff as they're investigating the murder. It's, it's absolutely joyous. It's creepy. The reveal, actually, the first time I watch it scared me. Just put chills down me because you'll never walk... You, you'll, ne you'll never walk past a bunch of photos or mirrors again, really, and not get chills. So as much as I dig trauma, it's so much fun. Profondo Rosso is just so much more professional. D. Greg wins. So that pits uh, two of the three mothers, Suspiria against Inferno. Um, I've spoken uh, in previous videos about both of them, so I don't want to go into too much detail about this. We've had a little chat about Inferno now, but... Um, Suspiria is the Ferrari of the, of the Three Mothers movies. It's the adult fairy tale, the Goblin soundtrack, just the opening alone in the in the airport uh, departure uh, lounge uh, with the storm outside and the and the automatic doors opening and closing and the Goblin soundtrack and it's I wouldn't say it's necessarily scary or maybe I've seen it so many times maybe it's not scary to me now it's just an absolute masterpiece are we looking at the winner yeah, I don't think it would be controversial if Suspiria won but Suspiria beats Inferno to a three-way finale Tenebre versus Deep Red versus Suspiria I kind of had in my head that we would get to a sort of Super, one of his supernatural films versus one of his mystery killer films. So let's attend to, we've got two similar ones, so let's attend to Tenebre and, and, and Profondo Rosso to see which is the superior of these two. This is, it's tricky. It is tricky. I, oh my God. I love both of these movies. Um, Tenebre is insane. Uh, and it's brutal, but... Uh, I think Profondo Rosso would edge it. I, I, I'd watch this for fun, m more than Deep Red, but if I wanted to really, if, if I was in a mood for a, just a, an honest-to-goodness horror movie uh, and I had to choose between those two, Profondo Rosso is it. So which wins between Deep Red and Suspiria? Probably his most exemplary Giallo movie against his most exemplary supernatural movie. <sighs> Am I really asking myself to choose between these two? Um, this has probably been more influential. Has this ever been bettered by, by anyone attempting, even himself attempting something in the same vein? Fonda Rosso, I love you. Spiria wins.